In this next segment, I'm going to be demonstrating Kubernetes services. Services are a little bit harder to wrap your head around um, just because there there's so many different flavors that they can uh, that they can come in. But essentially, a Kubernetes service is a resource that um, fronts a set of pods offering a particular service. So um, you know you have three MySQL pods and you, you, they're offering a MySQL database to other pods in the cluster. What you'd really like is not for the pods in the cluster to be bound to another pod in the cluster. What you really want them to do is access a service that fronts the service that all three of those pods create together. So um, that is what a Kubernetes service is for. So it makes more sense once you see it in action. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is create a deployment. In the previous demo, I uh, created a deployment using a, de a deployment spec file. Um, but you can, but if you don't want to set a bunch of crazy options, if all you want to do is say, you know, this is the container image I want to run, this is how many I want I want to run, there's a short command line for that. You can just do cube control de run demo, and this will create a deployment called demo and with pods running this image, with two pods running this image. Another thing that it does is on those pods, it sets a label run equals demo, which indicates that it, those pods were started by a cube control run command and they belong to the demo deployment. So the next we're gonna, thing we're gonna do is create a service for this application. So this serve host name container, all it does, it's about eight lines of go and it's just a HTTP server that if you curl you know, its address at port 8080, it will return to you the host name of the container. So what we've got here is a service named demo. Um, and then the spec is the service is going to be listening on port 80. And I'll go ahead and do this. It's going to be listening on this virtual IP address on port 8080. This virtual IP address is really just a key for IP tables rules to, um, to key off of. Um, to route service traffic on the cluster. Um, back to the service spec, the target port is the port on the containers that this service is going to be connecting to on the back end. And then the label selector for the service is it's going to select all pods with the label run equals demo. That's how it find, that's how this service matches up with the pods created by this deployment. So if you look at the details of the service, we can see that the endpoints of the service are here. And these are the IP addresses of our two pods here. And again, it found these pods by looking by using this label selector. So what I've got here is at the bottom of I'm starting up a pod in the cluster that is going to be curling. You can see that the name is resolvable here to that virtual IP, and then it's going to curl the, the service. And as you can see here, we're getting like two host names back, which is what we expect. We've got two pods in the deployment. So the service kind of acts as a consistent uh, front for the services. So on the back end, we can scale up, scale down, and the clients on the other end don't, don't know. Uh, you can see that we've scaled up. Now we've got four pods behind the service, and they're kind of hard to count, but there's four host names going by here. We can scale it um, back down to one, and again, you know the the end user doesn't notice. We're, but now we're only getting one one host name back. We can scale it all the way down if we set re replicas equal to zero. If we do that, then the sort service becomes orphaned. Basically, there aren't any endpoints. There are no pods in the cluster that match the label selector, and so you can see that we're failing to connect now. But all we have to do is back the service again. We can spring up two more pods here. They reattach to the service and now our service is back up. So that was a quick demonstration on services.